They're literally everywhere. There's no need to search. Big Tobacco, you'll have to answer for your despicable ride, for your wake of destruction, your one little big lie. Learn more at undo.org. Tyler Florence from the Great Food Truck Race joins us live to talk about the hottest season ever along the SoCal coast. Tuesday at 7 a.m. on the KTLA 5 Morning News. Good morning, I'm Eric Spillman. Former Attorney General Bill Barr in videotaped testimony before the January 6th committee says he worried President Trump was, quote, detached from reality in the weeks following the 2020 election. We'll have the highlights coming up. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Senators reach a bipartisan deal on gun safety. We're live from Washington, D.C. with the details. Good morning, happening live right now. We're in Wrightwood covering the Sheep Fire, which has scorched hundreds of acres. The people in town now taking a look at the heavy smoke. However, there are major problems with cell phone towers and Wi-Fi signals. We can explain how firefighters are communicating with the townspeople. Hi everyone, I'm Lou Parker in for Jessica Holmes. A free summer lunch for children here in Los Angeles. It starts today and we'll tell you where you can pick it up. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. New here at 10 o'clock, we have vital Paddington Bear movie news. We will get to that. Have we created a reality TV star monster? Some surprising video to show you. And our friend Mark McGrath pops by live to talk about the dark side of the 90s. Mark's on his way live. Oh, good morning, everybody, on this Monday and a cooler Monday, which is good news after the weekend we experienced with those temperatures back up into the 90s and even the 100 degree mark for the valleys in the Inland Empire. Right now, pretty foggy still at the beaches and the beach temperatures are going to stay really on the cool side. But the good news is we're dropping down to the hundreds into the 80s for the San Fernando Valley, reaching a high of 89. 76 downtown, 70 at the coastal areas, 78 Orange County Inland, Inland Empire 87 and the high desert up to 85 degrees. Frank. The January 6th committee has just wrapped up a second day of public hearings. The session was shorter than expected because a key witness had to bow out from testifying due to a family emergency. KTLA's Eric Spillman has been following the hearing from the newsroom, joins us with the latest. Eric, good morning. Morning, Frank. Just like in the first hearing last week, the committee used former President Trump's own words and those of his advisors to show that Trump knew he had lost the 2020 election, and yet he continued to make the false claim that there was widespread fraud. This morning hearing this morning's hearing was delayed when the star witness couldn't make it. Bill Stepien was the manager of the Trump campaign. His wife went into labor this morning, so he had to cancel his appearance. But the committee played video clips from Stepien's earlier testimony. He talked about what happened on election night and said that Trump got very angry when he learned that Fox News had announced that Trump had lost the state of Arizona to Joe Biden. Stepien and another Trump aide, Jason Miller, testified that they told the president not to claim victory right away because it was too early to know the results of the election. But Stepien and Miller said another advisor, Rudy Giuliani, who aides described as drunk that night, had a different point of view. Ballots were still being counted. Ballots were still going to be counted for days. Um, and it was far too early to be making any proclamation like that. I remember saying that, I, to the best of my memory, I, I was saying that we should not go and declare victory until we had a better sense of the numbers. Okay, can you be more specific about that conversation, in particular what Mayor Giuliani said, your response, and then anybody else in the room's response? I think effectively, Mayor Giuliani was saying, we want it, they're stealing it from us, where'd all the votes come from? We need to go say that we won. And essentially that anyone who didn't agree with that position was being weak. A few minutes after those conversations took place on election night, Trump went in front of the cameras and made what amounted to a victory speech. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win. Now, in the weeks that followed, former Attorney General Bill Barr had several meetings with Trump at the White House. In video clips the committee showed, Barr testified he told Trump repeatedly that the idea the election was stolen was, quote, nonsense. But he said 
Trump kept pushing outlandish and false claims about rigged voting machines and fraudulent vote dumps. Barr said he worried that Trump had become, quote, detached from reality, unquote. I told them that it was, that it was uh, crazy stuff, and they were wasting their time on that. And uh, it was doing a great, grave disservice to the country. Okay, so the very next day, the president released a video rehashing some of the very same claims that his chief law enforcement officer had told him were, quote, nonsense. The committee plans to hold a third hearing on Wednesday and three more hearings after that are set for later this month. We'll send it back to you. All right, Eric, thank you for that. 31 members of a white supremacist group arrested this weekend near an Idaho Pride event are due in court today. The accused white supremacists are discovered Saturday packed into the back of a U-Haul truck. Inside the van, police found riot gear, a smoke grenade, shin guards and shields. Police were tipped off by someone who saw the men loading the masks and shields into the truck. Police say the men who came from at least seven states were planning to riot at the Pride event in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They're facing misdemeanor charges of conspiracy to riot. The Kristen Smart murder trial is set to get underway in Salinas today with jury selection. The Cal Poly student went missing 26 years ago while walking home from a party. Paul Flores, now 45 years old, is accused of killing Smart during an attempted rape in his dorm room. His father, Ruben Flores, is believed to have helped his son hide the body. Both have pleaded not guilty. The trial was moved to Salinas after a judge ruled the suspects could not get a fair trial in San Luis Obispo. And now to San Bernardino County, where fire crews are still trying to contain the sheep fire that threatens to spread closer to the city of Wrightwood. It was reported as a small quarter acre blaze initially. It has exploded to nearly a thousand acres over just two days. KTLA's Gene Kang live with the latest updates for us. Gene, good morning. Good morning, Frank and Lou. This fire just grew exponentially, as you mentioned. I want to show you this on the ground first. This area of Locarna Drive here in Wrightwood, a lot of folks are coming out here. Apparently, this is the best place for a cell phone signal as well as Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, a cell phone tower is out right now, so communication is very low when it comes to this emergency. We know that as you zoom up there, Darren Fan is going to show you all of the heavy smoke, bad air quality, but this area as well is where you're seeing all of those live water drops and FOSS check drops. Right now, it has scorched 990 acres and the sheep fire is 5% contained. Highway 2 remains closed from 138 to Sheep Creek Road. Mandatory evacuation orders still in place.